you do me a massive favor and give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy these kinds of topics. I'm quite passionate about this and I will be more than happy to share my knowledge with you if it's something you're interested in. So, so if you could just hop off that thumbs up button, that would be great. Thank you. Hello. Um, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? I understand I look like a 45 year old mother of three whose kids finally reached school going age, so they've gone to school and now I'm planning on painting my hallway. But appearance doesn't mean a huge amount for today's video. Today's video, it's one that had such a huge reaction on Facebook for. I posted a status to my Facebook page asking if people would be interested in this idea and it got just under 400 likes. Mind blown. I have never had such a reaction to a video idea before, so this is something people are pretty interested in. Now, the only problem I kind of have is I could sit here and speak for probably three hours on the different topics. However, I don't think you guys would stick around for three hours. So I'm gonna kind of break it down. Today I wanna to have a very general video of how I have gotten myself out of debt and have built up savings and kind of afford things in general. However, in future I'll be doing videos on specific things such as, I've brainstormed a few ideas, how to save money on your groceries, how to save money on booking holidays, how to maintain a social life on a budget, etc, etc. And if you have any suggestions for me, please leave them in a comment section down below or message me on any of my social medias and pitch your idea to me. I, I, I'd be really grateful for any ideas you guys have, or anything you're interested in. I've made a butt ton of notes here. Yeah, with highlighters because I'm a geek like that. But this is something I'm actually quite passionate about. Some of you guys are probably looking at me going, maybe she's always been good with money. And I know if my mother is watching this right now, she will be laughing out loud because let's 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 reverse a little bit back to my backstory about 6 or 7 years ago I will tell you a little bit about my financial situation I was 22 23 in a full-time job earning good money I think I was 23000 euro in debt to a credit union and I had the bare minimum of savings to my name to constitute getting that loan. I had a bucket of shit card that was costing me a lot of money. You might be thinking, Laura, how did, how did you end up owing 23,000 euro for a bucket of shit car and nothing else? Pre-recession, money was free. You could get loans for absolutely anything. I was hitting up the credit union for loans for holidays to fix up my cars. I was buying cars, but they weren't good cars and putting money into them and then selling them and making a loss. Just, it was the accumulation of bad choices over the course of about four or five years. And trust me, it's not difficult to do. I had built up quite a bit of debt for someone my age and with nothing to show for it. I guess it's different if you've college debts or, you know, a, you know, a mortgage for a house or a really nice car. You've something to show for the debt. But for me, I had nothing. And it felt like I was getting deeper and deeper into debt and I wasn't able to claw my way out of it at all. But I did manage today. This is gonna sound a little bit braggy, but I feel like I should share my, you know, my story. Today, I'm 29 years of age. I am completely out of debt and I've consistently saved. I'm not gonna tell you like what kind of money I have in savings, but I have significant savings. I buy myself whatever I want when I feel like it. And I currently go on between four, five, sometimes six trips out of Ireland every single year because my passion is traveling. I absolutely love it. I buy myself nice things, as I said. And when people watch my Snapchat, a couple of people have expressed interest in how I can afford these things. They assume that I've inherited money. I get money from my parents. I'm in a phenomenally paid job and I can assure you none of those are true. I have just used these little tips that I have written out here to get myself into a position where I can afford absolutely and well I won't say absolutely anything I want but most things that I want and it's a really good feeling and I know that if something happened I would have a backup fund that can take care of basically an emergency so how to afford anything I have to disclaim that I'm not a financial expert I don't have any qualifications in this I'm just going to share with you how I got myself in the financial position I'm in today I also want to address that some people find it a bit rude and unclassy and just distasteful to speak about money. However, I believe in this day and age, people around my age, you know, coming into adulthood, you know, getting right into adulthood apparently, 
and um, I think it's okay to talk about money there's certain things that you do keep private like your bank balance and your week's wages and stuff like that but I think talking about saving money and how to be more money savvy is becoming not only a topic people talk about but people want to hear about do you agree I'd be interested to hear in the comment section down below okay what was the turning point from me being 23,000 euro in debt going more under and under every single week to making a change. I literally had to sit down and say to myself, it's time to make a change, Laura, because things really can't keep going the way they're going. So I literally had to sit down and make the decision that it's time to make some changes in my finances, how I spend my money, how I save my money, and just rechanging my focusing to clearing myself from that debt. Okay, my number one goal was to get out of the chokehold of the debt. Number two, to build up a really good savings, a nest eggs. You know, if you want to save for a big holiday, save for several holidays, save for a new car, save for, you know, a deposit for a house. Just set some goals that will keep you striving for the future. However, the number one goal always is in the forefront of my mind. Also, I think it's a cool goal just to get more smart with money for the future. Set some brand new money habits that will hopefully take you through the future and make you forever more savvy with money. The next stage, it sounds so simple and maybe it is something that everyone does but it was really what made the biggest difference to me was literally sitting down and calculating how much do I need on a weekly basis or monthly depending on how frequently you get paid, I get paid weekly. So what do you need for your food, your fuel, your petrol or diesel for your car and for a modest social life and transport costs if they're required if you use the bus or the train or trams and stuff like that. How much do you need on a weekly basis just to get by? without any extravagant expenditures. And for me, I don't mind sharing this with you, I set mine at around 120 euros a week. So that would cover my groceries, my food, which I think was about 50 to 60 euro a week at the time. My diesel for my car was between 20 and 30 euro a week. And then I was allowing myself 40 euro for socializing and stuff like that. I know it's not a huge amount of money for socializing, but we'll get into that further on in the video. So then what I did was I took the 120 euro from my total you know, into the hand income, and the amount that was left was to be divided between rent and bills, etc., etc., which I'm about to get into now. I would suggest, Manny would argue with me, clear your debt as much as you can while putting not as much into savings. For example, if you are setting aside 100 euro per week to pay off your loans and to put into savings, I would suggest putting 80 to 90 euro off your loan per week and then 10 to 20 euro into your savings as opposed to doing 50-50. And I explain to you why. You are paying more interest on your loan than you are on your savings. So the quicker you clear the loan, the better off you'll be. And the case for me was I couldn't touch my savings anyway. So eventually I got to a point where my loan and my savings actually equaled each other. So I rang the credit union and despite their protestations, I put one off the other and I was debt free. Best feeling ever. Also, whenever I came into any extra cash, I got any overtime money and anything like that, I would throw that off the loan. I just didn't treat it as if I had any extra money, I just popped it off the loan. Not very fun to do at the time, but so worth it when you make that final repayment. My credit union has online login, so you can actually log in and see what your savings and your loans are at any given time from anywhere. And I used to not let myself do it. Maybe every six or seven weeks, I'd log in to have a look. And it literally, people used to say this, but I never believed them. You will be shocked to see how much your loan is dropping by when you don't check in on it on a weekly basis. Genuinely, I used to be gobsmacked at how quickly it was reducing. I could see thousands coming off, literally. It was, it was amazing. And as you see that, you become motivated, you know? As you're starting to lull and you're kind of thinking, Jesus, I haven't much of a life at the moment or I'm not going out as much as I used to. When you see that, you're like, yeah, you know, you're really spurred on to get that total down to zero. The day that I offset my shares against my loan, even though my balance was zero, it was really like a breaking point, a new beginning where I could now start my new financial habits, build up some savings for myself and eventually be able to afford everything that I could ever want. I have five accounts. 
which is gonna sound so crazy because you're probably like, oh my God, she's so rich, she has five accounts. No, trust me, there is method to this and it really, really helped, okay? Number one, I have my current account. That is where my wages are paid in and all outgoings come out of to, to all the different accounts. I chose a current account in a bank that is more or less fee free. You just have to have a certain amount coming in per month and you don't have any fees. I know people who are with other banks in Ireland that charge 30, 40, 50 cent per transaction. Doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're using your card three times in a day, that's one euro 50 cent. If you're doing that maybe 10 days in a month, that's 15 euro. Think about that. So I have four other bank accounts. I have what I call a budget account and then three other savings accounts. There's method, wait for it. So my budget account, I calculate how much my rent, my bills, any other monthly outcomings, gym, membership, stuff like that. I calculate how much I need to cover that per calendar month and then add a little bit more on, 50 or 60 euro maybe, just in the eventuality that a, a sudden bill comes in that I'm not expecting or it's a little higher than I was expecting. So from the amount that was left over when I took away my weekly requirements from my wages, I set aside a certain amount to go into my budget account every single week, pays my rent, my bills, my gym membership, anything like that. And the plus side to putting a little bit extra in every single week is that over time that builds up and even if a monster bill comes in or you need to pay car tax or car insurance, there is a surplus there in the account that you can use to pay those. Then we're on to my first savings account, which is my grown up savings account. That is literally what I call it. That is where I put a certain amount in every single week and it is not touched. This is my grown up savings account. It's for the future, it's for maybe buying a house in the near future. It is not to be touched under any circumstances and that is where I have the vast majority of my savings. My second savings account is my nice things savings account. Yes, that is also what I call it. I use this account to put money in every single week and this is for the likes of holidays, nice things, or for emergencies. If something goes wrong with my car, touch wood, I can go into that account and take out money. It's one that I can have access to whenever I want, but I try to keep that nice and topped up for the likes of holidays, because as I said, I love to travel. And my third savings account is what I call my running away fund. It doesn't have a huge amount of money in it, but it does have a little bit if I did need to run away. It's just one of those things that they say you should have. Maybe it's an Irish thing, I don't know. Do you have a running away fund? I don't know, love to hear your thoughts. Okay, now on to savings. This is probably the bit that will apply to the most people. I just felt like I should address the debt bit first. Um, personally, for myself, I just had to make the conscious decision that it was time to make some new priorities. Priorities regarding my social life and casual spending versus having nice things in the long term like holidays and, you know, being able to buy a house and buying yourself quality nice things as opposed to throwing my money away on crappy small things that I don't even really need. My way of thinking shifted to, I used to go out like two or three nights a week and yeah, it was great fun, but I was coming to a point where I was realizing that you could spend 50 to 100 euro on a night out between drinks, maybe food afterwards and a taxi, or you could put that, you know, 150, 200 euro a week that you're wasting on boozing towards the future, towards holidays. And personally, I would rather go on a really nice two to three week holiday, you know, twice a year than go on nights out every single week. Do you know what I mean? Like I still have a social life. I still go out. I still do all these things, just not as frequently as I used to. It's just time to shift priorities, you know? It is all about just changing your perspective and thinking of the future as opposed to the here and now. I also changed my shopping habits. I used to go shopping frequently. I used to do online shopping frequently. I mean, we all know you can go into pennies and drop 50 to 100 euro on basically nothing, not nothing you've ever needed. And you just really need to shift your focus to, do I really need this? I mean, most girls can probably relate to the, I have nothing to wear, but you open your wardrobe and it's bulging full of clothes. Often you will go through your clothes and find something you haven't worn in ages. And I used to find, I'd go into pennies and spend 60, 70 euro on stuff that I'm, you know, I mightn't wear 60, 70% of it. You know, that kind of way. Only buy things that you actually need. This video is clearly just an introduction into how I shifted my mindset when it came to savings and clearing debts and stuff like that. But as I said earlier in the video, I will be branching more into specific stuff like how to save money on groceries and 
you know, stuff like that. So I would really appreciate any suggestions you have for spin-offs in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear it. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing more topics like this. Again, more specific money-saving topics if that's something you're interested in. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!